Doug, you can hear everybody. Yep. That's here. That's here. Joe, you good? I'm good. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yes, we can. Okay. So is Brown went out or not? I keep I keep going through this TV commercial. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? There we go. Hello. Hi. Hello. Again, maybe now it's working on both. Perfect. We good? You good? Good. It follows me into order. It's sound six thirty five. Uh, People here, we please stand and we'll have our Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag United States of America. We call it all of which it stands. On the nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for us all. Okay, Mrs. Munson? Andrew Benson? Here. Doug Day? Here. Brian Winlosey? Bronwyn. You, is she here now? You see her? Bronwyn, are you here? Oh. Bronwyn, can you hear us? No. Sure, screen's fine. Okay. Joseph Wetmore? Here. Here. Edward Levine? Here. Is, is Bronwyn here, though? I mean, do I mark her here or not here? Uh, she's here. She's here. Yeah, she's here. Bronwyn, can you hear us? Uh, doesn't seem to be reacting to your voice. She's here, but not here. Let's see if I can text her. Oh, I can chat her. Can you chat with her? Yeah, we're trying. Ronald, can you hear now? Finally, I it was all on my end. I'm in. Hello. She's here. Good. Okay. That's normally my job to have computer malfunctions. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're off so you can hear us all. Good. This is a, a working meeting uh, for the budget. That means that the general public can listen. But there is no input tonight from them. There is no questions from them tonight. We'll leave that for the public hearing. So having said that, you all have your five-year spreadsheets. Uh, you have the 2021 budget highlights that Charmaine has printed out for you. You have your budgets. Um, so do you have any questions? So what do you want to do this? Uh, do you want to have uh, each council member ask questions, or do you want to just start on the first page and work our way through? Well, first page of what? 
We'll go with, uh, I think we'll go in alpha. Well, we'll start with Andre first. Andre, do you have any questions about the budget? I was just wondering who is the water and food supervisor? I'm having trouble hearing Andre. Question is who is the, is the water and sewer supervisor? Cricket. That is Cricket. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Then? Okay, so obviously, if there's some in the future, feel free to indicate it. Rowan, do you have any questions? I do. I was wondering in particular um, about the if if there's a I was wondering if we were be able to up the wages, the base wage for the minimum hire rate for folks. Um, I know that it's a tight year, um, but I also I'm looking, I mean, two of them are vacant. It's on, oh, it, there's no page number, but it's in the packet of information that Charmaine gave um, the tentative budget packet. The wage structure. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Deb. Very, very and few, um, I'm sorry. Very what few was that? Are at that. Very few, if none, people are at that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I was just thinking, I, you know, I'm looking especially at the drop-in, thinking that I would, you know, the people who do that work, I'd like to have them start out at closer to 15 than lower. Um, so, wondering what folks think about that possibility. Right now, the rec assistants make well, well for 2021. They will make mm -hmm. 13, they will make 13 an hour, and then the director makes 1726. You always stay at that same level and just get the, the percentage increase. Okay. I think what Bron was leading to is uh, getting everybody in the Lansing town to be paid a living wage, according to the living wage scale for Tompkins County. And I think that's a good idea to move towards. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that even if there's nobody at the minimum higher rate right now, having that be a minimum living wage would be a nice thing to move towards. Nobody's there. And um, almost nobody gets hired there either. I mean, it's just... Start. It's a, it's just a structure to use as a tool. It's not necessarily. Um, what exactly is the living wage? Fifteen thirty seven an hour. Okay. Yeah. Is that full time or part time? Um, either. Well, I'm supposed to have a living wage if I work part time. Um, you work two jobs. You work two or more jobs. Yeah. But that's the per hour. Um, is that without health insurance? I'm assuming, Joe. Do you um, that, know? Because I know they have it. That's without health insurance. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sort of looking at our bottom line, that wouldn't have a major effect at all. But I just feel like that would be a the right thing to do. If if people are working for the town, I think they should be able to have that be a part of actually being able to support their families. Honestly, the, the drop-in, they only, what do they work, uh, 16 hours a week? So I can't imagine them being able to live off that anyway. <laughs> I mean, honestly, just. I understand, but right. I would like to get Lansing to be certified as a living wage employer. And if we up that number to 1537, we would qualify, and I don't think it would affect the budget significantly. Well, we don't know that, Joe, until we do the calculations. Where, how do you exactly become a, a, a living wage employer? Um, you uh, go to the Tompkins County Worker Center, you fill out uh, a form that basically talks about what your minimum pay rates are and uh, that you agree that everyone uh, deserves to live at a, to earn a living wage for work done and they certify as a living wage. Tompkins County is a living wage certified employer, for example. We have had no complaints about our wage structure. Never. We have had no complaints about our wage structure. In fact, we just had a nice bump on everybody's wage. Patrick, have you had any complaints about your wage structure? 
Uh, no, not since we hired and, and kind of restructured what we had a little bit. Okay. There has been a lot of restructuring done. Now, some of these will be part-time people. And so, once again, they're part-time. Um, and maybe that's the only job they have. Maybe that's the only job they want. That's the other part about it. So I think if you look at this in depth, you know, one size doesn't fit all. Right. But I don't see how, I, I guess I just don't see it being a problem to increase the wage. I'm just talking about grade one, two, and three, and just increasing it so the bottom is more like $15 an hour, which when it comes to the budget is going to have minimal effects because two of those are currently vacant and drop in, unfortunately, isn't opening yet. Um, and I, I think it just so shows a certain amount of respect for folks that were asking to do really hard work. Well, like I said before, uh, we do respect them. I have had no complaints to me about their wages. And if this is something you want to, to discuss with the STEP program and everything else, probably to be in depth, we should probably go with that, uh, the whole analysis next year. Somebody wants so, to, 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 so it'd be better to look at the whole wage structure for next year, is yes. what you're saying? Yes, because a lot of times you have these step programs where people move up a step plus their, mm -hmm. this year is two and a half percent, so a lot of them are getting a six and a half percent raise. Okay. There are a lot of places don't get a six and a half percent raise, uh, especially if you look at the cost of living index amongst other things. So this is something we can have an in-depth discussion next year and look at the whole step program if you want uh, to go through. Yeah. I'm comfortable with that, planning on, on addressing it for next year. Good. That's always been a concern of mine about these step programs. Uh, it's basically almost a longevity bonus. If you, you know, so many, and sometimes every year, sometimes every other year. So I think I, I would like to uh, have that discussion next year in depth and see if we are going to change it, what the process is. And sometimes these steps may be stressed out, you know, where rather than have them every other year, maybe you do them every three years, every four years. And so it's over the lifespan of a 30 year employer, a 20 year employee. If we look at the stuff program now, a lot of these people max out after 10 years, but they have a tremendous jump in 10 years when you look at where they started. So this is all good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love to have a more in-depth discussion about that maybe next year see how we, we, we do a restructure that if possible, okay? I'm all right with that, yeah. Good. Okay, Brown, do you have any other questions? Oh, probably. Give me a minute. Got to find the right papers. That's okay. We always, we always can circle back to you. Um, yeah, why don't we do that? Because okay, that worries. was my big one. No worries. Doug? I don't really have any questions about it. Okay. Thanks for asking. Oh, no worries. We'll, we'll, we'll keep coming back in case something pops up. Just raise your hand or indicate it. Uh, Joe? I, I see you don't ask if I have questions. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the uh, spreadsheet version, the five year spreadsheet version. Yeah. <clears throat> Page one. Yeah. Um, I'm noticing uh, that you've dropped the uh, line 144.0.406, um, engineer for miscellaneous water extensions. I see that's dropped down substantially, and I was wondering what happened or that, what's being planned. Um, that is under the, the guidance of the engineer, unless I'm mistaken. So we go by what uh, David Harris says. He puts in his his budget, just like uh, Pat would, just like uh, Mike and Cricket will. And uh, he said this year that that line won't be very high. So that's the reason why. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how he determines that, but I will send him a note and try to understand the process of how he figures how much work he's going to do for next year. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Um, Page two, um, taxes uh, assessed for municipal property. Uh, give, us, is, give us the give us the the, the code, please. 
um, 1950.4. Uh, 1950.4 taxes and assessment municipal property. Yep. Okay. Um, you kept it the same as this year. I think it needs to go up by like $25 because I know for a fact that the county's looking at a 4.9 uh, increase percent increase in levy. So that line will cost more than it did this year. And I, I from what I'm looking, I'm figuring it's probably in the 25 to 30 range, 25 to 30 dollars. So you want to change that from $3,110 to $3,135? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just because we know the county's already announced that they're raising um, property taxes. Now that is a, an expense. Of course, if we're $25 short, we always can do a... Uh, uh, budget mod. Right, but I think it just saves on the paperwork since we know that that number is going to be higher than what it is. Okay, so let's talk about paperwork. Uh, when we do these changes, we'll have to go back and recalculate if we're underneath the tax cap, if somebody has to do that besides you or me. We also have to go through to make sure that the fund balance, if we still want to have a decrease in our rate, we'll have to recalculate it also. Um, so we can go through all these changes now. But just keep in mind that at the end of the day, you know, if you're off 25, 30, 40 dollars, you know, come out of a budget model. Um, so you just want to keep it at three, one, three, five? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, what else? Um, I'd like to go over a little bit. I talked with Pat earlier. I'm looking at page three, which is what's happening with parks. And uh, from my understanding, last or this year, we had a decrease in uh, the events that we did, and that you know dropped both expenses and income. And we had a dramatic increase in park use fees, uh, both in uh, boat uh, dock fees and uh, an entrance to the park. And I'd just like to hear a little more detail about how he projected next year's budget based on that. Do you have any specific lines? I mean, his whole budget's got things that are going up and down a little bit, and I'm just trying to get an overall picture. Uh, I talked to him a little bit via email, and I was just wondering if he could give a little bit more detail on that uh, here at the meeting. All right, so one thing to, to keep in mind when we do events, like you talk about concerts, is that what you're making? Yeah, up? concerts and stuff. Okay, so when you do concerts or if you do programs out here, it's almost a wash. You may make a little bit of money on it, but mm -hmm. not much. Uh, in fact, I think we looked, we lowered it from 8,000 down to 7,000. We talked about that before, yeah. uh, as far as cost goes. So as far as my planning ideals going forward, I tried to plan like next year is going to be somewhat of a normal year. I have no idea at this point. I don't think anybody can tell the future right now. Um, so I just kind of, I tried to keep my budget similar to what it has been in years past and then, you know, just on based on usage, bump it up a little or decline it in certain areas. I don't, I don't have my budget in front of me because I'm running the the computers. But <laughs> um, is there a specific line? Well, I'm just trying to get an overall picture here uh, so that I can understand how the lines work. So basically, what your idea is is you're going to run all the uh, events, all the uh, programs and stuff, kind of like you did this year in which I mean, if you have to cancel it, you're gonna to try to uh, hope that most of that balances out between income and expenses and you know, kind of go month by month seeing what happens. Correct, I mean, I'm hoping for some sort of normal. We all are. <laughs> um, I, I'm not as confident, but I think it worked pretty well this year. And so I I'm feel confident with that. And you're seeing both boat dock fees and entrance fees to the park as dramatically up this year, right? Yes. Yep. Um, and you're expecting them to be up significantly next year, but it looks like you budgeted to have it up not quite as much as it was this year. Yes. Okay. I think that I think that makes a lot of sense. I just wanted to make sure I understood what I was seeing here in the budget. All right. So let me just say something before we go on to, to this further analysis. This budget is an estimate. Mm -hmm. what it is. A lot of times you'll take the, these five-year spreadsheets and see where the trends are, and sometimes you'll see a bump in something because there's something that is specific that has to go on there. 
Uh, sometimes we use it from reserves. Sometimes we use it from other fund balances. So once again, these are guesstimates. And one of the things we do is we estimate our revenues to be very conservative. And we, we also estimate our liabilities to be on the high side. So that uh -huh. if it is a doomsday year, uh, what happens is that at least we have a cushion there to absorb it. Very similar to like when we have a heavy uh, plowing season. Uh -huh. like uh, The normal rule of thumb for plowing is 75% will be your January, February, March, April, sometimes May. And then, hope, and then 25% is usually the back end of that year, which uh -huh. is your November, hopefully not October, November and December season. And this year, as you can see from the analysis we've done when we give you those monthly reports, that this year was heavy, but safety comes first. And so that's why we have our fund balances and that's why we have our, our, our estimates. So when you look at these things, it's easy to jump on and say, for anybody to say, well, we need to move this over $5, $10, $100, whatever. Well, please keep in mind that these are estimates. And what Pat did this year, circling back to him, is that he made a firm rule that if you don't have a tag on your car, you pay a fee, an entrance fee. And the other reason was because a lot of the parks were closed or a lot of the, like the uh, Greater Ithaca Activity Center was closed. And so they saw our park. And, once, and the response we've got from that is that they love our park. And so mm -hmm. why, why, why wouldn't they? So consequently, that's why he, he estimated that. When you look at a lot of the, the revenue streams that he has, you'll see that for a lot of his estimates this year in revenues, he's actually met those at the end of July. Mm -hmm. so in many ways, it's been a blessing that he's, he's overachieved that. So once again, these are estimates. And I hope everybody has, keeps that spirit in mind that these are simply estimates that we try to go over the five-year track to see if we're in the same ballpark. I hope that helps. Yeah, no, absolutely. I just wanted to make sure that I was understanding what his plans were and what he was thinking of, and, and it it helps to uh, talk it out. Um, I'd like to move to page four. Um, let's uh, let's start off with line eighty-eight ten point one ten. Um, the cemetery line got cut dramatically, and I'm wondering what's going on. What? 88. It was 300 or 3,000. It's still 3,000. I see 500. That's the, for the contractual. That's 8810400. Right. Okay. You're the right. Budget, the budget actually was lower, was only 500 to begin with. It's been moved to 3,800 because he, um, Cricket had to buy. I don't know, he had to do something up with the cemeteries. Do you remember, Mikey? Oh, he put out a split rail fence. Almost all of them. Okay. So that was modified. So it looks like it's a one-time expense. Yep, right. I understand. I just, I can't tell that from the numbers. That's why I'm asking questions. The highlight, the highlighted yellow means that it was budget, it was modified. Okay. The budget. <clears throat> uh, let me keep going. Uh, that's going to be the end. I was working through all my notes here. I am okay. Now I'm up to page six. And I'm looking at all the snow removal lines, and I, I, I guess I'm a little confused as to what all these lines indicate because, uh, you know, there's like six or seven different lines, and I, I understand equipment. I don't know what we do for contractual. I don't know why there's two different personnel lines. And so I'd like a better understanding of that section. And I see overall we've increased it by about $12,000. So I guess we're expecting a little bit more expenses. I assume that's mostly in personnel. Well, you say twelve thousand dollars. Do you have a specific line? Um, the total of those lines. There's uh, what do you call it? One, two, three, four, five, six different lines that are labeled snow removal and different things. They're uh, now. Now keep in mind, we had a heavy year this year, right? We're about. 80. I understand. 
I'm just I'm just trying to understand what all these lines mean and and money's being switched around from one line to another a lot and so I'm just trying to understand what what's going on with all those lines because I don't really understand that part of the budget well and so I'm trying to get a better understanding. So the contractual is the actual workers, right? See how they no, got personnel that? is the actual workers. Thank you. Contractual okay. would be like salt. What else, Mikey? Um, fuel. Fuel. Yep. So right, but we've got we've got two different lines for uh, snow removal. Um, oh, other. So is other stuff that we're doing for say the county's work? Is that what the split is? So we've got snow removal town and snow removal other. And we've got personnel on both lines. And so I'm just trying to understand what those separations are. We're contracted by the county, correct? Yes, you are. We're contracted by the county to uh, what, 30 miles in a row, whatever. So, so that's, I, I can't hear this. That, that is where it's, it's, that's where you see a difference because we're contracted by the town. We, we have a signed contract where they say they're going to pay us X amount a year and that can fluctuate. To make okay. Roads, right? So that snow removal other is our contract with the county? I believe so. We can research that and get yeah. back to you if, it, if there's a different answer, yeah. Joe, okay? Okay, thank you. I was just trying to understand what's going on there because it's, no, it's a little yeah. confusing. That's okay. So keep in mind here that that when they plow in the wintertime, they plow, what, 140 miles? 100, yeah, 140 miles. 140 miles. Now, Town Road, whoever you talk to, is about 97 to 99 miles. So that means they're, they're picking up another 40 miles of county road while they do this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll plow the, the, the county roads to get to the town roads. And so it's a lot easier just to weave both those together. But they also have to make sure that they calculate the amount of salt spread, gas used, time used, everything else is all broken down. We did switch to straight salt. Remember last year? Yep. Obviously, there's an increase of cost there. Okay. Um, right. Rather than a salt mix, they went to straight salt this year. So that's probably why there's an increase in the price of contractual. Right. And the other thing is that they probably use more this year, right? We're down about 8% yes. for our uh, personnel. We had to ask you for a budget line just to cover it. Do you remember? Yep. Early on? Yep. That's where the yellow part is. But you've zeroed out equipment. Uh, huh? zeroed out equipment. Find a snow removal. Right. Okay. I suspect because you're not buying anything this year for that. But that's a question we can get back to you on, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, what next? Uh, page seven. Yeah, let's see. Um, street maintenance equipment. We're talking DB fifty one ten point two. Fifty one ten point two. That street maintenance equipment. Yeah. That part, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. That part, I believe, was uh, we had pieces of, of equipment we we're going to buy. We bought them early, that one piece, and they're going to move down. It was uh, between the DA and the B and the to see between the DA, the DB, and the SW. Okay. That one truck, and basically forty-five thousand was going to come out of that. Forty-five, thirty-five. I was going to come out of the DB. And we already used 30,000 for the truck. That's why there's 5,000 left. Okay. Um, and let's see. And I'm noticing that you're balancing the budget by doing a uh, $250,000 drop in uh, the fund balance. Yep. And so what does that leave us with fund balance for uh, highway? And I'm concerned if we're using it, if we're using fund balance to uh, cover operating expenses, at some point we're going to have to either raise taxes or do something in order to uh, cover it because we're going to run out of fund balance. Well, keep in mind that the, that the B and the DB fund is not about taxes, it's about sales tax. I understand, but we're going to have to do some, we're going to have to do some adjustment in the future if, uh, 
we okay. continue the budget the way it is. Okay, so let me finish. So what happened this year is that Cricket was budgeted four hundred thousand dollars for street maintenance. Mm -hmm. He's about two hundred that thousand, two hundred thousand back in. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's only using two hundred, so you're not going to see that in these numbers here. But two thousand, two hundred thousand, that's coming back in. Not to mention his chips money, which is another two hundred thousand. So having said that, you're going to have he's only using two hundred out of the four hundred thousand for his road maintenance, which means that that DB fund will go up 200, which means that this year, he's the one who initiated this. He didn't have to. We gave him that budget. He could have burnt through all 400,000 of it, but because he's conscientious, he said, you know what? I don't know about what's gonna happen this year. Let's be conservative. So he did, so what we did is we dropped that back in and then we, we used 250,000 back out. So the net is 50,000. Okay. Of the DB, if that, uh, let me see where, where my notes are. That's where we are with that because we track that a lot because right now when we do sales tax it is roughly 80% uh, of the sales tax money that we receive goes to the highway, that's the DB, and then 20% of that goes to our planning and code officer and or the informational aid and that's, that's the B fund. So we're very conscious of where the B and D B fund because you just can't recover that. So that's uh -huh. why he was, he was proactive about it. And he got in there first and says, I'm gonna be conservative and dump it back in. Now he has the same attitude going in to this year. He still has $400,000 of the 2021 budget he's allocated or he's asked for. So when we budget 250 for that, once again, if he feels as though things aren't gonna be good with sales tax, he'll drop it back again. Okay. Can I see how our fund balance uh, goes from uh, 2018 to 2019 to projected for 2021? So I can just get an idea of uh, how those fund balances are being maintained. Well, let's get back to you on that. Yeah, I understand that. Um, but I just want to make sure that our fund balance uh, stays healthy and that we uh, cut it down in very careful ways. Uh, well, getting back to you with our projections and everything, uh, right now it looks like the A fund with the projections looks like it would be $17,638 in six months. Mm -hmm. um, the B fund, uh, the actual six months is $141,539. Uh, the actual amount is $416,015. We could run 18 months running that without any uh, fund without any sales tax money whatsoever. The DB fund is uh, $61,755 over right now. It's uh, 771603 is the actual, 709848 is the projected. Now, granted, we'll see where the fund balance goes with these things as we get our sales tax in. Uh, and that can fluctuate. And I'm waiting for the August sales tax to come in. And when that does, I'll give you a projection of what the percentage decrease of what we have. Okay, thank you. So, um, page eight. I'm looking at lines SL3. 5182 400. One at a time, Joe. Okay. Yep. SL. SL3 5182.400. And the one right below it, uh, they're dropping down from nine to seven. Because they, they received a refund this year. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember. It had something to do with polls. Or with the yeah, it's, so yeah. so they received a refund, and so their their fund balance has increased a little bit over the years, and they also received that money. So I cut it back a little bit. Okay. And, the, and then also, if when you know when the lights get changed to the LED, I'm hoping that the bills are going to go down even farther. So hopefully that's the that's the intent, right? These are the the lighting districts you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, that was another question. Is do we have an idea of when those are getting changed? I haven't. I can either reach out to CJ or Cricket on that. I think CJ might have. Yeah, we haven't heard anything yet. Okay, you haven't heard anything. Good. 
Okay. Um, page nine. SS three eighty one twenty point two. That's three eighty one twenty point two. That's sanitary sewers equipment. Yep. We are. Looks like we're buying something. We're buying meters. Uh, okay. What the intent is is to put meters in there accurately so we can measure flow because we're we're, we're trying to switch from EDUs equivalent dwelling units. Right now, the sewer each EDU is two hundred gallons. Mm -hmm. We switched over this already. We did it with sewer district number one. Their capacity is based on gallons only. So that means when their pipe, we'll, we'll put a meter eventually when sewer district number one is completed, uh, where it hooks up to the Lansing line, we will meant from the, from the private lateral, we will measure how much usage they have and they're only allowed a certain number of gallons a day. Now the hope is eventually to do like we do with our water meters uh, and eventually just have them hooked into a central database uh, and once we get these accurate meters in there, we're going to use Cherry Road, which is a closed sewer district, as the control. And then we're going to use the Warren Road as the other one to measure to see the accuracy. Our goal is eventually, when we talk to Linda Woodard uh, from the village of Puga Heights, is to go from 200 gallons per EDU down to 100 and eventually lower than that. Right now, the, the guessment is about 80 or about 70 gallons per EDU. But I have to work and respect Linda Woodard's um, willingness to drop that. We have to give her enough data to protect ourselves because the bottom line is, is that if there's a surge, it's the village of Cuga Heights that's going to take the hit from DEC. So I'm very protective of them and also the village of Lansing with, with their sewer lines. Okay. Okay. I thought uh, the state DOT was going to be putting in the meters for uh, the Warren Road uh, project. Is this a separate set of meters and they have their own? This is not about the DOT. This is about the Warren Road Sewer District. So SS3 okay. is actually Cherry Road Sewer. Yeah. Okay. And then let's see. And that, that covers my questions for now. Thank you. Okay. Let's circle back. Andrea, do you find any more? Okay, and let's, let's keep in mind that this isn't final. I mean, if you have questions that come up during the next three weeks, feel free to email them or talk to the uh, department heads if you have questions also. So if you don't think of a question tonight and all of a sudden you say, geez, I should have asked that, please email either uh, Charmaine uh, and we'll try to get accurate information to you, okay? Mm -hmm. Andre, you had a question? I was just wondering why only 53% used so far. I'm having trouble hearing Andra. She says she's wondering why there's only 53% used so far. And which line are you on? COVID-19. They haven't been in school. Oh. And so it's that much different. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The youth service of the A7320.4. Yep. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what line she's talking about. Which line again was it, Andre? A7320.4. A7320.4. Point four one zero. But I guess it, I guess it, they went months and months without looking at the program. Yeah, they, they left school in March. So I mean, so it was basically what four months without any and they, any it's student been a, workers. And it's been a little slow getting started too. I haven't had any, any timesheets yet. So um, okay. just Travis getting you know getting the kids together and things. So he so, did he did write me this past week and say that he's expecting to have some for next payroll. So thank you. This budget's going to be interesting because a lot of stuff may collapse back in or maybe a wash because we don't get. We don't use the service, we don't get the revenue, we don't generate the expense. So the good news is we're positioned with our fund balance to be able to withstand this. We're just gonna to have to wait for these numbers to, to come in month by month. 
and make the adjustments. Um, the highway guys have already made some adjustments on these. That's why they're not paving as much this year. And they've, they've used their, their time for other things like drainage districts. And drainage districts comes out of a different pot of money than does the A or DA, because that's the drainage district money. And so they're being paid out of that when they do that service. And water and sewer maintenance, the same thing, comes out of the water and sewer lines, whether it be what, Warren Road or Cherry Road. So if they're doing service for that, it comes out of those funds, not the A or DA. That's why I, I'm very curious to see where we're gonna end up this year um, as far as the end goes. I will share one more thing with you, is that uh, I was told by Charmaine that the health uh, consortium, what's the phrase they use, Charmaine? A premium holiday. It's a premium holiday, which means that the, the town landing is not charged any premium for December for the insurance for the health consortium. That's a $41,000 savings. Please keep in mind though, that's spread over the A, D, A, B, D, B, and water and sewer. So well, that means that's 41,000 that we don't have to spend in the month of December. So that's, that's, that's good news. And then also on top of that, obviously, if, it, if as the town not having to pay that fee, the employees don't have to pay their fee for that month either. So yes. Yeah. So a little more for them. So that's Ronald, awesome. Ronald, let's circle back to you. Any more questions? Um, I had one, but I can't find it now. But my other one, um, is Pat for you? I just noticed that uh, the were a seventy one forty dot two zero zero is up to forty thousand for um, equipment for park and rec fields. I'm just wondering, or playground and rec fields. I'm just wondering what that's for. That is for uh, two mowers and a utility vehicle. Okay. Thanks. So keep in mind with the rec department, they have a schedule of equipment replacement, mm -hmm. like, uh, just like the highway department does. And I think yours is what, the three-year cycle? Yes, basically. Yeah, yeah yes. basically it's a three-year cycle. Sometimes the doors are on two years where they flip them, uh, where they have maximum coverage on warranty, but they also have also maximum coverage on replacement value when they sell it on Craigslist. So there okay. is a schedule that we have put out together uh, as far as the, the equipment goes. So each year it may fluctuate up or down, depending if there's a coat, if there's a mower that year, if there's something else. Okay? Yeah, I assumed it was something like that. Thanks. Now we're back to Doug. Any questions? Once again, no, I kind of understand it, so. Beautiful. Okay, Joe, back to you. How many mowers does the parks department have? I thought we just bought a mower last year. Right now we currently have five. Okay. Is Thank you. Yeah. And sometimes they mow twice a day. Uh, not quite. I've okay. seen it. <laughs> depending. Like to, like depending on the, the, the amount of grass. Versus summer, you didn't mow twice a day. No. Sometimes no, I even it's, it's been a very slow fall. Yeah. But if you have a heavy rain and you know you have the grass growing, whatever, you have to, like I said, we groom our fields. People are very proud of our fields and they expect certain value. And so we make sure every effort is made. If you only had two mowers and God forbid one broke down, what would you do? You know, and we're in trouble. That's why we have four. Now it's five. I'll see. <laughs> also, put lights on. Okay. Anything else? Great meeting, everyone. Yeah. All right. You got the highlights of the budget, right? The 2021. And one of the things that we're talking to the county about is they're projecting a 12 to 15 percent decrease in their sales tax again for next year. So we'll track that. One of the things to please keep in mind about sales tax is that, once again, we're not gonna go to the first phase, second phase, third phase, fourth phase, hopefully. Um, but right now, uh, we understand that the Cornell uh, students get tested twice a week. They do 50,000 tests um, per week, as far as that goes. And I think uh, last I knew from the data Joe sends out every night that we're at 0.243% 
infection rate um, going forward. So we'll see where that goes. So I will far, so good. Well, I will share something with you. It's um, I use this reference of, uh, that the AIDS virus that uh, killed 38 million people and 31 are, are were actively infected as opposed to 2019. So you have 31 million people still infected with the AIDS virus. What they've done is they've contained it, but right now they, are, they, they give them a drug cocktail that the T cells that they measure by are, are so low, you can't even tell they have it. The only reason they know is because they're being treated by it, you know, by the drug protocol. This may be where we're going with this COVID. It may be the fact that it'll be here every day. We're just gonna to have to contain it and deal with it. So like I said, you killed 38 million people. That, I think you check the, the CDC on that. Um, do you have 38 million died uh, and 31 are affected or it's the opposite of 31 and 38? It's killing 2,000 Africans a day at one time. Over how many million? Um, since they first started this, but like I said, you know, they started tracking this, I think, in the 70s. Uh, and back then, ironically, it wasn't masks. They were arguing over it was gloves. You know, should doctors wear gloves, amongst other things? You know, so now it's masks. But uh, the other thing about it is that uh, when you track this thing now, I'm sure we'll find that eventually, you know, this COVID, it, it will level off. And here we are. Just a matter of what the, what the protocol will be and what the testing will be. And I could definitely see that once we get the saliva test, this quick test done, we can do it rapidly and also do it in a large scale. You go to the airport, you, you'll, you'll get a saliva test. And when, as you're going through the line, they'll test you right there, just like they do with the, the products. Uh, it's just a matter of everything being used to different drugs and different protocols. So having said that, anything else to do with the budget? So far, we'll add $25 to the uh, budget, if nothing else. And we'll do the, the, the I don't think it's going to change. It's definitely not going to change the, uh, uh, underneath the, the tax cap. I think we're about 36,000 under, something like that, which I mean. Yeah, so that's fine. And I don't think it's going to change the, you know, the $25 is not going to move that levy that much. So we'll still be probably at a, at a, at a decrease for the rate. Once again, you got three more weeks, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, before our next meeting, right? At uh, the next meeting, we'll set the public hearing. Uh, and then the tender budget will become the preliminary budget. But in the meantime, feel free to, once again, talk to different department heads or else discuss it, you know, send emails, and we'll try to get you as much accurate information as possible, okay? If nothing else, I'd like to go into executive session. And it gets within range. This is for number two, medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person slash corp or matters leading to said dismissal, removal, promotion, appointment, or employment, discipline, demotion, or suspension. Right, I'd like to move that to a second. I'll second it. Can we also talk about uh, possible uh, property acquisition uh, under this executive session? Oh, uh, no. Protocol is about to come out. We'll have to go back. That's how we do these things properly. So, Andre has a second motion. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Munson? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Oh, Charmaine will stay and so this is uh, Deb will stay. Any questions? Give me a holler. Good job. Good job. And 